camera rolling. Okay, this is uh, roll two, scene two, take one. Bravo, India. Salutation and comment, how you guys doing? This week we'll be discussing how I edited the Born Identity short film adaptation which is Samuel J. Day's Breathe. I assistant directed by the way, so that's pretty cool. And I'd say this is the film that I worked on that looks the most cinematic and looks the most realistic in terms of, um, it looks very filmic and my body looks really weird on this top, doesn't it? It either looks like I'm quite hench or not, I don't know. Sorry, I'm getting really distracted by that viewfinder, the, the actual, yeah, sorry, okay. So, <laughs> for Brie, this needed the most editing I'd say only because the way that we had this show it wasn't originally how we planned it the way the actual film goes and uh, narratively it's in a non-chronological order whereas the actual original film that we had planned is like a very straightforward narrative but because this film went over runtime which was five minutes we had to think of something so Samuel he sort of did a rough cut himself as a as a director he didn't need to but he did do and uh, it just sort of really helped me out and he got it in a different order and it saves a bunch of time this show had a massive amount of editing to do I was, I was also doing the foley and the sound i was waiting for the actual person to do this music score for the actual film as well you know because i was doing three films you gotta always remember that guys i was doing three films so i'm under a lot of pressure now this film it required a, a fair bit of editing in terms of you know what to do is very time consuming and so the first thing that i did do uh, color correct it and also color grade it now initially we have planned to do the first shot in piccadilly train station but because we didn't have a permit to film and i was suggesting you know what we could do a bit of guerrilla filmmaking and sort of record you know without permission not that i advise you guys to do that wink wink nudge nudge <laughs> you know, initially a lot of people thought we were a musical band so you know they, they were fine with that but as soon as our sound guy got his boom pole out he gave us away and so you know we got told we're not allowed to film anywhere near Piccadilly train station so we had to find another place and we had like a crew member of like 12 or 13 or something with this film for that shoot so we had to find somewhere to shoot and then this place that we found is very um well quite awful in terms of it's very orange and it was quite uh, dim. I don't know if you can tell that it was outside train station or not. I had to work with what we did get. That obviously needed color correcting with Pascal corrector and RGB curves and sort of you know change it to make it somewhat seem attractive and appealing and added a bit of a vignette to it as well. Now the next shot that I did a bit of visual editing was when the assassin comes and looks through the actual car. Now we had our stand-in because I'm an actual actor James. You're gonna make it for that day's shoot so we got our friend who was also helping out with the lights Paul Paul Castello to wear the jacket and it doesn't fit him because there's a tall guy but you, you got I don't know if you guys can tell or not. He had to walk towards the door, but his walk was slightly slow. You know, I had to speed it up. I had to make sure that the film was actually five minutes, five minutes, and then the credits don't uh, get marked or anything. Now, the next shot is my favorite shot, and I keep showing in all my promotional stuff, and I showed in my last video that I uploaded, which was the bus vlog, and it's the actual drone shot, and I'm really proud of this shot, and I thought it looks really cinematic as hell, and it's so cool. Now, this is quite a fair way of editing, only because we tried a fair few drone shots going up and everything, but the shots weren't, you know, weren't the best, basically and it's because the shot that we were going for was the actual camera going down slowly on the cityscape. We realized with the actual drone that we were using, the actual takeoff was smooth, but the actual landing was really rough as hell and it was quite scary. So what I said to Samuel, what I do, I reverse the shot. Now, there's a fair few problems with if you're gonna reverse the shot. There's flipping cars in the background and there might be people. You know, the actual shot consisted of two cars, two vehicles going backwards and a, a human being going backwards as well. So now I had a new dilemma, how I was gonna get rid of this because this was a uh, far out shot i thought i'd use the uh, cc wire removal which is free on adobe after effects and i thought i'd use that because i don't think it's too noticeable if i use it for this film because um it's right in the distance it's not like a far close-up shot where it's too obvious or too clear i had to track the car moving or i keyframed it and bit by bit i moved it and so car it's out of existence and then i also followed the actual human being so hopefully that shot doesn't look too obvious now also using the actual drone the shot is with a wide lens the actual original shot is very curved as you can see what to do on after effects is a little effect called optics compensation so with that you add that in and then you can sort of adjust how it is and so as i did that it sort of made the image looks much more normal and not too much of a fisheye lens effect and now because i know that i'm using cinema bars i think i was using the aspect ratio of two 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 one one it was fine that the top one bottom got cut off and then i also added the uh, color grading and so this is the final shot which looks quite cinematic i like to think and it's very beautiful and it adds so much depth into to this little student short film. I slept. Can't believe it. Yeah. Well, you were tired. 
How do you know he still owns this? I left in the lorry because it's in a bit of a tricky place to edit. But I also thought it'd be quite nice if I just left one vehicle in. It's not too strange if our vehicle reverses because it's completely fine. They can be putting in stuff in a certain storage place or whatever. So I thought that was completely fine. Now this next shot is hopefully invisible editing and hopefully you guys didn't notice. But Les, our actor who's playing the mechanic and Jenny who's playing Bourne, they aren't in the same room while it's being shot. We shot them in separate days. I've made the same sort of mistake with you know, Ali's film where the lighting changes. With this one, because I learned from Ollie's film, it wasn't a drastic change. We couldn't really do much because the garage that we were at it had the sun coming through the actual uh, ceiling. It was the sun's fault. So I couldn't really do much of the change there. We did have a little bit of garage light. I had to alter the color of the film. So I tried to color correct it, tried to match up the actual scene together. So it seems like it's together. And then added our overall color grade. Hopefully the scene uh, runs seamlessly. <laughs> Try saying that really fast. Hopefully the scene seems, blah, blah, blah. hopefully the scene runs seamlessly. <laughs> That's really quite difficult to say if you see it really fast. Now the next shot, it was one of the first shots that I worked on and uh, Simon was really happy with it, is the sniper shot, which was really quite easy for me because I just found a um, stock image of the sniper circle, that little cross or whatever. And then, you know, you could use Photoshop, but I use a free open source program called Gimp 2.0. And on that, I made it into like a full on picture and then I put on Premiere and just sort of change the color and sort of move the position of it. So it's following Jenny and as uh, she's running and you add in the sound effects and it's completely fine. Now for this next shot, so because I was telling you, I was constantly editing this shot originally, as James walks in and he sort of cocks the gun, it was supposed to be slightly longer. But you know, if the shot was slightly longer, I realized in the original shot, you can see sort of a shadow coming in. And that's the shadow of our sound guy, his boom pole. So then we shortened the shot, which helps out because I don't need to like remove the shadow or something like that. But then we shortened that again. Um, it's completely unnoticeable. Now, uh, the next scene is the fight scene. For the fight scene, because we were inside a tunnel and we were filming this around 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. or something like that. We were inside this tunnel and actually lights were really bright. The way it was shot, it was fine because sort of changed the actual color temperature in the camera and sort of matched it out because the lights in the tunnel, the white lights, and then there was also yellow lights. But the actual fight scene was sort of filmed and I edited it and I just added a slight color grade, just a slight one and it's not too obvious. Oh, here's a little continuity error for you guys. I didn't edit it because it wasn't too noticeable and it'd be a bit of a hassle to edit. As Jenny comes in and she drops the knife and she kicks James on the face because you can see in between the actual shot, in one of the shots, she's dropped the knife. In the next, the knife is actually in her hand. She's holding the knife. It's a little uh, continuity error for you guys there. It's, I think it's there for less than a second. So I think we're allowed to be forgiven for that. Now, the last thing that I did do was the title for Breathe. And the way I did that was made in After Effects and it was actual text that I wrote Breathe and then sort of separated it out. So the actual text is sort of separate. So what I did was I actually got a smoke asset and then just put it on and then um, I let it go through and see the speed of it. I got the text and then I just, you know, put it on and then I just sort of uh, spaced it out. So it fits in. With the adjustment layer, I slowly by slowly try to make the actual text appear when the smoke is going through. The way that you pull the effect of it is by using turbulent displacement or also a fast blur. But uh, that was pretty much most of the actual difficult editing or the actual editing that stuck out for me that I did on Breathe. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found this very informative and hope you guys learned something or learned how difficult it is creating a short film or creating film in general. Please be sure to comment, like and subscribe. Let me know if you guys are making short films yourself or if you guys are interested in making YouTube videos or vlogs. That's all for now. Remember again to comment, like and subscribe subscribe also share it with your friends that are you know film students or whatever and hopefully you know they can pick up or learn something about it or you can you can t tell me something commenter on it and uh, tell me what i've done wrong or something like that remember guys geeks are cool so love peace and feel gender okay bye <laughs>